Welcome into Elegant High School on this bright and sunny Wednesday evening. I'm Jake Herman, joined tonight by Dylan Zisman for this match between your Elegant Wildcats and the Cedar Creek Eagles. Off to a little bit of a late start this afternoon. Had some late arrivals, including one of the referees. But he's here now getting unpacked. Game's going to get underway with just one main referee. As the Cedar Creek Eagles wearing their white jerseys, blue shorts, blue numbers, take the field to the left. And on the far sideline, Coach Ronnie Michael readies his Elgin Wildcats for battle as they'll be taking the field shortly as well. A matchup of young goalkeepers this afternoon. Alexis Tinajero plays between the goal pipes for Cedar Creek, the sophomore. And on the Elgin side, freshman David Macedo will be the one manning the goal. As Coach Michael sends his team forth from the huddle. The captains, Julio Villa, Ryder Michael, and Luis Hernandez today. Dylan, last time these two teams play, it was a high-scoring affair. Won by Cedar Creek, final score of 6-4. How do you think that plays into what we're going to see today? Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of goals again. Uh, it looks like just on first glance that uh, the Elgin lineup is uh, a little scrappy. Uh, not as many players on the bench, uh, so we'll have to see how fatigue plays into their ability to stand off a couple goals as the game gets uh, later on. Yeah, that's right. Marathon, not a sprint. And no team has that been more evident for than the Wildcats, who have recently played a couple of matches where they were just oh so solid in the first half keeping some of the district's top competition to a scoreless draw but then in the second half they've seen some things go against them so they'll be hoping to put together a complete game today as Peyton Moss pressures the ball Choco Gonzalez the fullback plays it off balls one in the midfield by Memo Hernandez for a moment through ball down the right flank sending Espinosa in after it but the sweeper Anthony Jones plays it back to the keeper Macedo laid off to Luis Rodriguez Eagles charge forward early here Memo Hernandez number eight Dylan a player to watch for Elgin a midfielder who really knows how to control the ball slow down the tempo that's something coach Michael says his team has been working on trying to be able to matriculate that ball up the pitch tempo most certainly going to be key here I agree with you that was Jesse Martinez surviving the challenge before Luis Rodriguez clears captain on the ball Gonzalez played back for Leal And that one off the face of Gonzalez. Official stops play. Action continues. Heavy touch there by Zamarón. Luis Hernandez played it back to Luis Rodriguez. And a throw in to the Eagles. Eagles who sit in fourth place in district play. District 18 5A. Just above that playoff line. Manny Carreño with a nice ball forward. Back to kick it away is Rodriguez. Pedro Tellez now. Moves it up. Zamarón's pass. Eventually reaches Hernandez. Luis Hernandez. Nicely played through ball. This is Julio Villa who wins a throw. 
A lot of possession being taken early on by Cedar Creek. Elgin could use a change in fortunes right here. Hernandez's throw into Tellez. Another throw. Last time these two teams met, as I mentioned before, Cedar Creek came away as 6-4 to four victors in the reverse fixture. Elgin actually led it 3-2 at the intermission. But Cedar Creek came out and blitzed them four goals in the second half as this one goes over the touchline. So with that in mind, stamina is most definitely key as we keep rehashing. Trying to keep your legs as fresh as possible for as long as possible. It doesn't look like Coach Michael has anybody at his disposal today on the Wildcat bench. Played back neatly by Choco Gonzalez. Pressure in the box. Memo Hernandez follows up on it. But a misplay sends Cedar Creek in on the break. Counterattacking chance. Ball played out wide for Espinosa. Espinosa's cross is headed out of the box. Followed out by Nestor Martinez. Tellez pressures. Turning with it now is Gonzalez. Long distance strike is blocked. Julio Villa couldn't start the counter. Eagles establishing themselves in the game's first five minutes. Nice one, two. Gonzalez draws a foul. Free kick coming from the right side of the box. It'll be Noe Espinosa to take it. Into the box. An outswinger. Controlled now. Tried to play it back for Gustavo Tobias. Couldn't do so. And it'll become a goal kick. One player to watch out for in this one would be Jesse Martinez, the junior playing forward on the left side. He had a hand in all six goals that Cedar Creek scored in the last meeting. Four of them he scored himself, as you called it, the sombrero. The old sombrero. I'd never heard that before. Also had two assists, so... It was a, an evening to remember last time these two teams met for Martinez. Well, you've got the hat trick with three. For four, you give yourself the big hat. You get yourself the sombrero. Okay. Never knew the origin of that. Espinosa. Played into the middle. Morales takes a touch. Over to Ricardo Lopez. Villa on the ball. Counter-attacking chance for the Cats. Julio Villa with a step over. Effort from distance is fortunate to get it back. Villa's shot is blocked by Leal. Quickly forward on the counter-attack. Carreño. Intercepted by Luis Rodriguez. Some early pressure for the Eagles. Nestor Martinez defends on the far sideline against Zubets. Played up to Martinez, who has won a throw. Jesse Martinez, the junior, one of the leading scorers for Elgin. Choco Gonzalez, Alexis De Nova, they also chipped in the last time these two teams played with Cedar Creek tallies. Now a headed flick on is going to go harmlessly to Macedo, the freshman goalie, who made some sparkling saves in their last match at home against Maynard. Match in which Elgin came up short 2-1. to one. They nicked one back late. It was Lane Eckert who scored 
off the crossbar and in in that one. Now a through ball is offside. They wanted Espinosa. Jumping the gun a little too quick there. Yeah, he's got to time his run a bit better than that. Wasn't a bad effort. Wildcats will be looking to pick up points today for the first time in district play. Promising, promising ball there to Villa before he's dispossessed. And a free kick to the Eagles. This is Martinez turning at the edge of the box. Lines it up. And it didn't get enough on it in the end. Routine work for Macedo. Anthony James, the sweeper, can't get it out. Another effort from distance is handled. That one off the left foot of Espinosa, the senior. A trifecta of early shots for the Eagles. Nothing doing so far for the Wildcats. We'll see if they can deliver some service up the middle of the pitch. Like this to Villa, but a bit of a heavy touch. This will be last kicked by Luis Hernandez. Throw in to the Eagles. Who sit just one win above the playoff drop line. 4 3 and 3, good enough for fourth place in the district. Bastrop right on their tail at 3 3 and 3. Villa with a step over. Julio Villa with some good energy to start off the match. Through ball attempt, can't get past Leal. Villa's won it back to Martinez. Flick on into the box. Zamarone gets around to it, but didn't get a lot of it. Still a shot on target, though, for the Wildcats. A welcome sight. Good to see everybody getting involved. A creative buildup there, I thought, Dylan. Uh, definitely good uh, Good options trying to spread, spread the field out a little bit and then bringing it all back to the middle. A couple of miscues went their way by way of deflection, and sometimes that, the way the ball rolls, just you get you take what you can get. That was Anthony James from distance, missing past the far post. It was a nice build up there. Memo Hernandez had a little back heeled layoff there. And now a goal kick from distance. Takes an unfortunate bounce for Elgin. Here comes Espinosa in on the right wing. Mishandled. Elgin wins the throw. Good composure that time from Luis Rodriguez. The right back. His throw in. Looking for Peyton Moss. Moss lays it off to Zamarone. Luis Hernandez. Looking for Villa. Couldn't connect. Villa gets a piece of that though and Moss wins it. Moss immediately puts in a ball for Villa. Villa gets around the keeper and he's in all alone in the box. Julio Villa scores. 1-0 to Elgin. And that is just a great job there of maintaining possession of the ball throughout. Really excellent footwork all around from the midfield down to the forwards. And all execution pays off in the end. An early tally for Elgin's leading striker. Julio Villa makes it 1-0. The senior getting his team on the board. And for the second time between these two teams, an early lead for the Cats. Early scoring is going to be huge here for a team that's really strapped for fresh legs today. So to get out in front and to get out as early as they are getting out, definitely going to be a momentum builder. Elgin has won a throw. Love the composure on that finish from Via. It was a good ball in. Give the assist on that last goal to Peyton Moss because it was his ball in 
that really set up Villa in along the left flank and the goaltender for Cedar Creek, Tina Hero, came out, but he came out too far. He was outside the box, couldn't use his hands on it. And Villa said, thank you very much, chips it right around him, and dribbles his way into the net. Got a little trigger happy there, but he managed to maintain composure. And sometimes when, you, when you're all alone on an open net, you got a little impulsive and decided to try, try to kick the ball from maybe just a bit too far out. And he took a good touch there, got himself in a position where there's no way he was going to miss that. Yeah, I like, like the point you brought up. He he really dribbled himself right to the gold mouth. He, he didn't rush it at all. He, you know, had heads up play to realize the time he had, and now he's in again. Julio Villa with some pace along the left side. Zubet's giving chase. And Villa dribbled himself over the touch line. As the Wildcats stay on the front foot. Hernandez with a good ball in for Villa. Villa dangerously into the box. But now Elgin are caught out. Counter coming. Ball up ahead to Espinosa from Gonzalez. Jesse Martinez now. Threw ball into the box. Settled down offside. He wanted his teammate Garcia. And he was a bit premature on the run. Just barely got him off there. Uh, looked like maybe just an arm or so. But just enough to get that call. And again, just getting a little trigger happy. Really trying to make those runs. They're just jutting out a couple feet in front. And that'll do it. Another ball played in over the top. Kicked way into the bleachers. And man, that's still rolling, Dylan. <laughs> I think almost got up here into the booth. I, I, there are practically no fans here today at Elgin the early start potentially kept some of the parents busy throw into Moss Memo Hernandez pursues Hernandez pushes it forward Memo midfield Zamarone Villa turns Julio Villa, who has the only goal of this game so far, plays it back. Zamorone. Dylan Zamorone with a step over. Leaves it for Luis Hernandez. And that's given away along the near touchline. Gonzalez chases. And wins the ball back. Gustavo Tobi Tobias, number eight, fouls. Number eight for Elegant, Memo Hernandez. Cats win a free kick. Really good ball control here by Elgin, managing to keep it close to feet. And just playing, not necessarily tiki-taka or one-touch, but just keeping it short, sweet, and to the point, and getting that ball around quickly. Making good use of the space that they've been given. Anthony James sends one into the box. Hernandez gets ahead to it and can't quite steer that one onto the frame of goal. Goal kick. A little bit too much air on that one. Anthony James, an important player for this Elgin team, the one who just took that kick. Occupying that sweeper position, really the man who holds it all together at the back for Coach Michael as a substitution into the game for Cedar Creek. A little bit of rest time here for Tobias. As the Cats continue to push forward, it was all Eagles in the first five minutes, and it's been the Wildcats on the front foot since. That effort really never challenged the goalkeeper. And a booming punt. Martinez goes up and challenges for it. Ricardo Lopez forcing Anthony James, excuse me, Anthony Jones, to kick that one out. Nearly half of our first half played. Each stands of 40 minutes. And it was the 12th minute tally of Julio Villa, the senior, 
who put Elgate on the board first. And Dylan, I've been impressed with Via throughout so far, number 19 in purple. Uh, I agree. He's been doing a good job of moving the ball around, uh, really taking charge of the offense, uh, making sure that uh, spacing is kept even throughout, and also helping lead the charge up front. And Via, with an even bigger role demanded out of him today, the second team all district contributor from last season because they're missing their newcomer of the year rider Michael the senior unavailable for today's match everybody's gonna need to step up today at the very least having no one on the bench really puts a strain if not physically also emotionally on all these players to really make sure they're filling their role to the best of their abilities well, that indirect free kick was a disastrous one here comes Jesse Martinez the other way. Macedo comes out to deal with it and gets it away successfully. Choco Gonzalez with a heavy touch off his chest. Julio Villa controls. Could have played it back but decided to weave through the defense. And he's dodging defenders left and right. Now he does play it back. This is Pedro Tellez. 1-2 with Moss didn't work throw in taken by Cedar Creek and a foul quick restart couldn't get it past Anthony Jones nifty play defensively there if that ball gets through Jones it's a sure goal for Martinez instead the other way it's Elgin's Luis Hernandez Played on for Villa. Villa. Into the box. Somewhat harmlessly. But Elgin has won a throw. Bit of an unsure defensive play there from Cedar Creek, who probably are hoping they would have been off to a better start than this. That really gave Elgin the, the chance to move all their guys forward and put themselves in a position to try to nick one more here. Hey, wouldn't that be huge? Villa commits the foul. As the captain Morales plays it back to the keeper Tina Hero, whose booming kick sets up Cedar Creek. Peyton Moss pressures. Got a piece of it with the outstep. And now it's Memo Hernandez. Beautifully played through ball to Villa. Villa has support to his left foot. And a save made by Tina Harrell. Perhaps his best save of the afternoon. Keeps Elgin from doubling the lead. And that ball had a little bit of firepower behind that. Julio Villa still dangerous here on the left flank. Into the corner. Villa. Wrestling forward along the touchline. Trying to win a corner. And he cannot throw into the Eagles. Coach Michael calling out instructions from that far touchline. Has to be happy with what he's seen so far. After his bunch survived some early pressure from Cedar Creek. And have pretty much dominated the last 15 minutes. Illegal throw-in gives the Wildcats some prime real estate here. A real change in possession control here. Early on, it was all Cedar Creek all the time. And now, with the goal to Elgin, Elgin really got a chance to blow it open. Hernandez with the throw-in to Luis Hernandez. Villa played back for Jones. Jones has a crack! And it was deflected away by Leal. That would have been a challenge for Tina Harrell. That was a rocket off the right foot there. Unfortunately, ended up on somebody's backside. But could have, could have spelled trouble had that gotten through. Yeah, that one's going to leave a mark. Meanwhile, an excellent one-touch pass by Martinez. Sends Cedar Creek into the box. And no foul is given. Eagles were appealing for a penalty. None called. Cedar Creek trying to stay on the front foot. Gonzalez plays it back to Sesmas. Now Morales. K 
can't get past Memo Hernandez. Patient run here by Espinosa is upended. Memo Hernandez away on the counter. Trying to be a little bit too fancy there on that back heel pass. Jones with a nutmeg over to Nestor Martinez. Luis Hernandez. Zamorone. The passing has been much crisper for Elgin than it has in recent matches. First half against Maynard, they really struggled to generate a lot of pressure. And coming off of their last match yesterday, the second half against Weiss, they were outscored 5 0 in that defeat. Looks like something's really clicking here for the Elgin boys. With these 11 guys who showed out today, must have something, some form of chemistry together. Villa is away with it again, has support on the right. Villa turns to his left. Takes one that's nicked over the bar. Corner kick coming. Tina Harrow just nudged that one over the bar. And a message from Coach Trey Horton to his team right now. Yeah, nice shouting point. some, uh, some encouragement. Up. I think that's directed at his back line. Uh, that can be directed to any one of them. I think everybody's getting a little bit of the sharp, a little bit of the pointy end of the stick here. So Cedar Creek had the first three shot opportunities of the afternoon, but it is Elgin who has had the last five, and they've won the first corner of the match right here. And in all fairness, being what they are, being what they are, and having what they have today, the fact that they have this momentum now could allow them to maybe rest a little bit and take some time to recoup and make sure that when the second half rolls around, they've got the energy to keep this game going in their favor. Yeah, it looks like a 12th player just arrived for Elgin. Meanwhile, Memo Hernandez raises his left arm and takes the corner with his left foot. It's an outswinger, headed onto the cage and saved by Tina Harrow. It was Luis Hernandez who got ahead to it. And Tina Harrow punts it away. Foul on the midfield on Jones. The keeper, Tina Harrow, doing a good job here of getting the ball out and distributing to as, mu as much as he possibly can. A first half reminiscent of the last time these two teams met. After which Elgin led by one. Ended up losing the match by two. He'll be hoping to flip that script today as Jones climbs the ladder for that header. Ball won neatly by Zamaron. And the Wildcats push ahead on the counter. And a foul. Took a bit of a heavy touch and ended up having to slide in to try and regain possession. Official has stopped the play. Now a headed effort in along that near side. It's been Choco Gonzalez who's had the most success so far offensively for Cedar Creek. As Tobias re-enters the pitch. Ball played into Martinez. Who wins a throw. Defended well by Luis Rodriguez who's been marking Martinez. Surely the Wildcats don't want Lightning to strike twice or history to repeat itself. Whatever you want to call it with him. Four goals in the last meeting. The reverse fixture back in February. Eagles lost their last match 3-0 at Pflugerville after tying Bastrop on Friday. They won their match on Thursday against Pflugerville but couldn't follow it up with a second win as this play is ruled offside. Zubets prepares to enter the match for Cedar Creek. So it looks like we finally might have our first sub for Elgin on the sideline over there. Yeah, it looks like that's Felipe Rivera getting ready to enter. And a warm welcome for him indeed. It's going to be nice for at least one of these guys to take the pressure off at least for a couple minutes. This one has to be played back due to the pressure up front by Ricardo Lopez. Maybe his activity will inject some life into this Cedar Creek side. 
Zamorone. Neat through ball. A little too far in front of Hernandez, but Zamorone gets it back. Zamorone's ball. Looking for Memo Hernandez. Weaving through traffic in the box. Villa comes away with it. Has a shot and a goal. Make it two for Julio Villa. Elgin doubles the lead. After getting off as many shots as he had and on target at that, you could almost anticipate that he was going to put another one on net pretty soon. And sure enough, 2-0. Twice the fun for the Cats here in the first half. Two goals on their first seven shots. And Julio Villa gets the goal. Assist to Memo Hernandez. He scored in the 12th minute, and now he scored in the 29th. And what a moment that was. Very neatly taken, powerfully blasted into the lower corner. That one had a little bit of pressure behind it, but no hesitation there with the right foot. Sure strike, back of the net, one more on the board. Free kick for Cedar Creek, who looks to rush it. They push it up all the way into the box. Martinez got ahead to it. Jones helped header it away, and he's in some pain in the box. Anthony Jones falls down to the turf. Play continues here for Elgin. And now it's stopped as soon as the Cats touch the ball. And this is something Elgin can ill afford. An injury to Anthony Jones, who is up just in the nick of time. Looked like he bore the brunt of the contact there. He collided with Jesse Martinez in the air. He is up. I wonder if he'll have to go to the bench here. Yes, he will have to go to the bench. Going to be a substitution coming here for Elgin. And luckily for them, they've got just the guy. Yeah, just in time, right? Of course, this game a makeup from one of the games that was originally snowed out. Peyton Moss re-enters the pitch. Drop ball. We'll restart play. Luis Hernandez plays it out to the side. Martinez pressuring in the box. Calmly dealt with by Villa, who slides back into a defensive role for the moment. Hernandez on the ball. Has Rivera out to his left. Instead lays it off to the center of the park. Zamorone. Long distance shot into the grasp of Tina Hero on a bounce. A little bit of a mishandle there. You gotta wonder if he's thinking about the other goals he's let up. If that's gonna come back to bite him. Yeah, Tina Hero could have done better on the first goal. Second one really was not his fault at all. No, second one was just a powerful strike. He also did really well to save a couple of other quality chances for Elgin. Directed one up over the crossbar earlier. This is a foul, and the clock is going to stop here for a moment. Here in the 32nd minute for an injury. Looks like Zamorone is the one who's down on the play. And if Anthony Jones isn't ready to come back in, then Elgin is going to have to go down a man here. This one looks like it's giving some trouble to Zamorone. We like to hope he's okay as the Elgin training staff helps him off the pitch. So Elgin right back down to 11 players for the moment. Just another obstacle for this team who with a 2-0 start today have a chance to claim their first points in District 18-5A or they are winless over the course of the 2021 season. A prime opportunity here to do something they haven't done all year. But they'll have to battle the fact that they have just just 11 players. So now it looks like they have 13 players. Two, two elegant players over on that bench. Action restarts. Into the box. And directed right back out. Tellez. Couldn't fully get rid of it. Carreño. 
And a nice challenge near the edge of the box by Jones. Ball played back to Leal. Can't connect the attack. Goes back out to center. Along the near touch line. Neatly done by Tobias. Gonzalez off the back of Rodriguez. That was an impressive display of footwork. A little bit of a reverse rainbow, if you will. Flicking so, it over his own head. So with Zamaron still on the bench, it was actually Elgin playing with 10 men that entire time because Memo Hernandez has just re-entered the game. So Elgin survives the man down, if you will. For the time being, it remains 2-0. Show some grit, young lads. <laughs> this ball is played out over the touchline. So if you're Elgin right now, Dylan, have to be pleased with the way things have gone. How does your game plan change, if at all, now that you've got a two-goal lead in this first half? Well, I think the game play would change more so because you have two men on the bench rather than having two goals to your name. Uh, I guess with... With the goal, it does allow you to take a little bit of a load off. You don't have to be rushing towards the offensive half. You can kind of park the bus a little bit. Just try to play prevent defense. Well, we'll see how much of that they follow. Because on one hand, you don't want to fall back too far. Because then you're just inviting some pressure. Like they are right now. Nestor Martinez filters it out to the side. Carreño on the ball. Played back to Jorge Martinez. You can see they're using that park the bus mentality. All 11 men on their defensive half. And now they win the ball. A chance on the counter. Luis Rodriguez back to Memo Hernandez. They've done a really good job of giving themselves an opportunity to rest their attackers. So when an opportunity like this comes... Well, that one's wasted way over the crossbar. Took the words out of my mouth before I even said it. Well, so but when waste. the opportunity comes, Dylan, they can counter like that. And there were a lot of options there in the end for Luis Hernandez, but he decided to have a crack. Maybe wish he could have that one back. Hernandez might have gotten a little bit trigger happy there. Trying to put that one in from 25 yards out. Play restarts. Tina Hero out to Zubets. Hernandez gets in the way of the pass, but unwittingly redirects it. Manny Carreño was running for a moment before Jones won the ball back. Nice pressure by the Elegant back four, really disrupting, Dylan, what Cedar Creek wants to do. Cedar Creek needs to push this ball forward if they want to have any shot of scoring before this half winds to a close. And they still got about five minutes to go before the intermission as Memo Hernandez is fouled. Elgin doing a great job here, not only of trying to push this ball forward, but also putting the clamps down on defense. Clock stops for a moment again. With, well, let me go ahead and correct this clock right here. It's actually just over six minutes to play in our half. Whoa. Long ball in from Jones. All the way over the end line. Potentially big development in District 18-5A here. As the Elgin Wildcats try and go for their first district win of the season. Try and snap an 11 game losing streak. Off to a 2 0 start as Cedar Creek wins the free kick. Cedar showing, Creek. Oh, go ahead, Dylan. I was just showing a lot of promise to pull out that first win in district play this year. 
A little ways to go in this one. Just over five minutes to play in our first half. It was Villa at 12 and 29 with the two tallies. A couple of assists in this one. Peyton Moss got the apple on the first goal. And on the second goal, credit Memo Hernandez with the beautiful assist. A couple of really nice through balls have been setting up Elgin for success in the attacking third. That's a beautifully won ball by Hernandez up ahead to Moss after he gets the service from Luis Hernandez, but that pass didn't have enough weight on it. Heavy touch in the defensive third, but Elgin recovers. Luis Rodriguez safely away. The clearances had been convincing tonight from Elgin at the back. Really playing that prevent defense. Giving themselves a good opportunity to keep this sheet clean, at least for the remainder of this half. Nice move there by Felipe Rivera, who wins the free kick, perhaps wishing the referee play the advantage there. That's one of the toughest decisions, Dylan, as a referee, playing the advantage. Is it something you had to deal with a lot? Uh, I, yes, personally, uh, allowing advantage, for the most part, is... It's in the best interest of the ref to keep the play going, unless there's a clear obstruction of a goal-scoring opportunity. Uh, in which case, you just whistle the play dead right there. It's the same deal when you're deciding whether or not to give out a yellow or a red. If you're going to give out a red card during a game, play has to stop immediately and that player has to be sent off. But when you're going to caution, play advantage, or give a yellow, you can kind of let the game play on a little bit more and give it a few seconds. And then you can kind of retroactively bring that call back into play whenever the time allows itself. Oh, right there. No no clear goal-scoring opportunity for Elgin. They had an attack sort of forming, but going back to the foul, of course, that happened about 30 seconds ago, they had an attack forming, but they were on their own half of the, of the field. So far, not a lot of work through the middle of the pitch for Cedar Creek. Elgin doing a good job forcing them out to the sides and applying immediate pressure. Not a lot of time and space on the ball for the Eagles. Good sign for Elgin. Vastly different than what we saw at the beginning of this game, where we thought that Cedar Creek was going to come away with a little bit of a offensive showcase, or at least a possessive showcase, having a little bit more time on the ball. And Elgin's done a really good job of maintaining their time on the ball and keeping it around longer, putting themselves in a chance to get some goals, get some shots on net. Bit of sustained possession now for the Eagles, as Leal winds around, turns. Played back to Sarmiento. They're giving themselves time to keep their shape. And keeping their shape is going to be key, especially if they're going to try to get this ball into the middle and give themselves a better opportunity to score a goal here. Not the best clearance there, but Peyton Moss wins the ball in the middle of the field, so that'll work. Rivera with a miss hit. Possession back to Ricardo Lopez. Looks like they've moved... Jesse Martinez, their junior forward, their top scorer, back into the center of the pitch. As a little bit nonchalant there was the defender. Good pressure in the offensive third. I think he was trying to prevent himself from making uh, contact with that ball so that the keeper could pick the ball with his hands and give it the old boot and try to restart play up top. Leal lays it off nicely to Tobias. Leal. Couldn't connect with Choco Gonzalez. Elgin's won a throw. With under two minutes to play now in our opening half. Last time these two teams met, it was Elgin leading 3-2 at the break. Right now they lead it 2-0. Long ball in. Dealt with nicely by Leal. The right back has had a good game for Cedar Creek. Up ahead to Lopez. Winding through the defense. Choco Gonzalez now with space. Plays a cross into the box. Martinez couldn't get ahead to it and it's cleared off the line defensively by Nestor Martinez. That's an excellent second chance defensive play there by Nestor Martinez. Getting back after the keeper's already fallen down. Looks like a bunch of guys got stuck in the box there. A little bit of a collision of sorts. Put the keeper on his backside on the turf. James gets a great piece of that defensively. Last touch by Lopez. 
and a goal kick should probably wind out this first half safely for Elgin as that ball rolled all the way across the track. And he may as well take his time at this point. Just want to get to the half with a clean sheet, get yourself a shot of water, and a good chance to recuperate and get back out there. Yeah, nice little lonely saunter for Macedo, who said, hey, there was another ball back there. I'll grab that one, too. Just, why, why don't you? Who's going to stop him? <laughs> Surely not. Surely not any of his teammates. Surely none of his teammates. And Cedar Creek a little far away to stop him. So now only 18 seconds to play in our in our first half. Jones boots it away well. And now Elgin may be wishing they had some more time until it's dealt with by Zubets. Five seconds to play in the half. And we're going to finish this half with the Wildcats 2-0 to the good here on their home turf. Dylan, your thoughts on an entertaining first half? I really like what I see from the Elgin offense and the Elgin defense, especially the Elgin defense after hearing that they had uh, surrendered six goals, four of them to the same guy in the in the reverse fixture. So to see they put up a clean sheet and then provided two of their own really spells a lot of promise for the second half. Well, it's been a, all about the second half for Elgin recently in all of the wrong ways. It's been a, a second-half defensive issue that has been plaguing Elgin time and time again. So what does Coach Michael say to his guys during this break to help them maintain this 2-0 advantage? I think it's the momentum and the positive energy that they're going to have from this 2-0 lead that they've got right now. Plus the uh, fact that they've got a couple more guys on the bench now than they initially had at kickoff. But they're, gonna have, they're just going to take this opportunity to rest their legs take a shot of water, grab a bite, they've got the snack or something to give themselves some energy. It's going to be about uh, conserving what energy they do have left and then maybe trying to make a, a couple last pushes, maybe put one more in and just seal this game away. Yeah, that next goal I feel like is going to be very important, Dylan. If Elgin were to go up 3-0 to the good, you would think they'd have the game won, but if Cedar Creek comes out of the break and gets an early one, all of a sudden it's back to game on. We're going to take a, a break for a quick moment. When we come back, first half stats and analysis, and then our second half coming up in less than nine minutes. Don't go away. This is Elgin Soccer with a chance for their first win in district play on Vipe Live. Broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe. VYPE .com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE .com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, about yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up in the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Bravo to Vibe VYPE. -E .com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe. BYPE.com. BYPE.com. Down for the end zone. Touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Bite Sports. BYP. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Hallelujah. 
Go to VIPEVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEVYPE.com. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Woohoo. The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Second half action is nearly upon us here at Elegant High School. I'm Jay Kerbin, joined by Dylan Zisman. Thank you to those of you who have joined us at home on Vipe Live as we wrap up this halftime with the score, your Elegant Wildcats 2 and the visiting Cedar Creek Eagles nil. Halftime is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, 
Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. So Dylan, two goals in the first half, both courtesy of Julio Villa. For an elegant team playing with just 12 guys today, trying to avenge a 6-4 to loss from earlier on in the season, you have to be inspired by this performance so far tonight. I think that it's really important to get the energy built up soon and often with a team that's strapped for players like Elgin is today. And I think it was really key to get that first goal as early as they did within the 12th minute. Uh, just leading the charge, knowing that you've got one under your belt early, allows most of your players not to take a load off uh, physically, but to take a load off emotionally and be like, hey, we've got this, at least for the time being. We can kind of sit back, let the play come to us, and direct the control, uh, control the flow of the game, rather. Yeah, in that 12th minute, it was Julio Villa who took charge. As you mentioned, he was able to sort of dribble it in around the Cedar Creek keeper, Alexis Tinajero, and walk it into the net. And then in the 29th minute, off of a beautiful service from Memo Hernandez, Villa blasted one into the lower left corner to make it 2-0. First half stats, Elgin with eight shots, Cedar Creek with four, and the Wildcats won the only corner kick of the half. They lead in that category one to nothing. As Cedar Creek and Elgin break their respective huddles, what do you think the message should be for Coach Trey Horton, the manager of the Cedar Creek Eagles? Well, like you said early on in the first half, and I quote, wake up. These guys seem to be falling asleep back there on defense, and they're trying to let their offense run this show. So when Elgin's putting the clamps down on defense, not letting them get towards the center of the field to get themselves a shot on goal, they've really got to try to mix it up. And the defense needs to be more involved in the play. Maybe push that ball forward a little bit too. Instead of parking the bus like Elgin was doing towards the end of the first half, maybe kind of team pressing a little bit forward and getting something moving on offense. Yeah, we'll see how they're able to translate defense into offense. Like you said, a couple of key guys on that back four for Cedar Creek so far have been Jorge Leal and Justin Zubetz, a pair of hardworking juniors who have been really trying to deliver those balls into the midfield, but credit Elgin for being able to disrupt what they've tried to do. It's a beautiful evening. 66 degrees is the temperature right now. It was about 70 at kickoff, so it's cooled off only so slightly. And... It's a type of night that makes you wish there were fans in attendance, doesn't it? It really does. I remember when I used to play sports in high school, love seeing fans in the stands on nights like these. And it really just be it doesn't beg the question, but it definitely brings back that desire to, at the very least, have your loved ones back watching you play the game that you love. Yeah, again, ticket and capacity limited due to the COVID restrictions. As Harveen Grandes plays it back. To Memo Hernandez to start off the second half for the Wildcats. Already the Eagles coming out a bit more aggressively here. They really got that memo to wake up. They're starting energetic and they're starting early. Along the right flank. Played out over the touchline. Eagles win a throw. So they started off the first half, if you remember, flying. They had three early shots in the first five minutes as a dangerous ball is played in. Macedo turns around and dives on it. Able to thwart off the early attack from Espinosa. So much like the first three minutes of the first half, Cedar Creek coming out hot. It's important to remember for the Cedar Creek squad to keep that momentum going throughout the entirety of the half. Here's Villa on the ball into the box. Julio Villa turning inside and it's deflected up over the bar. A saving play there by Jorge Martinez on the back line. Could have been 3-0. That would have been a very early hat trick and just a huge momentum booster. The, the momentum has shifted favor Elgin, or at least I would like to think. And that would have just driven it home even further. The pace of Villa just continues to give Cedar Creek so many problems. As Memo Hernandez takes the second corner of the game for Elgin. And getting ahead to it that time was Grandes. 
but it rolled easily to the keeper at the end. Tenth shot of the day already for Elgin. Nestor Martinez sprinting back defensively. Rivera gives it away. Jesse Martinez is able to draw the foul. That might bring out a yellow card. We'll see if it does. It will. Yeah, from one referee up in the booth to another down on the pitch. It is Felipe Rivera who is cautioned with the yellow. He arrived late to this game. Provided an all-important 12th man for Elgin. I was just being a touch too aggressive while really not making a play on the ball. And that's textbook yellow card for you. Well, and he's got to come out of the game for a moment. And with Zamorón unavailable due to injury, it is Elgin right now playing with 10 men. We'll see if Cedar Creek is able to take advantage. Well, they've done it once. They can do it again. Tobias with the free kick in. This is dangerous until it's headed out by Luis Rodriguez. And Harvey Grandes goes down to the turf. No call. Another dangerous ball played in. Martinez racing Macedo there. But it's the freshman keeper who gets to it first. And sure just hands. in the nick of time. Sure hands right there. Grab that ball and hold on for dear life. Macedo skies this one. Landing straight in the middle of the Elgin E at the middle of Wildcat Stadium. And a foul. Luis Hernandez was held. So Elgin playing today without their center back, Juan Mendoza. Without their senior captain, Ryder Michael. And without a few other contributors as well, including Lane Eckert, who scored late in the Mainer match. That was the last goal Elgin scored until today. They had been shut out in consecutive matches, albeit by the best two teams in the district, Weiss and Hendrickson. Looks like they've got all 11 men back on the pitch now. They do. Yeah, thanks for calling that out. I missed them coming back in. Rivera has re-entered the action. He's on that caution. He'll have to be careful going forward. Rivera maybe lays up a little bit on that challenge. But this is pedaled out over the line. Not what Ricardo Lopez wanted to do right there. Conceding the throw back to the Wildcats. Kind of backed himself into a corner there. Didn't really have much else. Maybe not getting it out as quickly as he wanted. Jones has given it away cheaply. Counter coming for Cedar Creek. Good ball to Espinosa. Espinosa plays one in. Looking for Martinez. And the ball had a bit too much weight on it. That is a tough break for one of the better runs of this game. Yeah, nicely formed counterattack there, wasn't it, for Cedar Creek? Cedar Creek's been doing a good job all game of trying to create these runs into space on the wings. And they've been flagged for offsides a few times. And that one... The, was the best of their three. Third time's a charm, if you will. Yeah, we'll see if they can get Jesse Martinez more involved. The high-flying junior has been a little quiet today after scoring four goals in the reverse fixture. Elgin trying to reverse a second-half trend of conceding goals. They conceded five in the second half after going to half scoreless with Weiss. Espinosa on the flank. Dangerous cross in. Couldn't be handled on the first touch. Turning with it now is Lopez, but he's unable to get enough of it. Throw in coming, and Coach Horton applauding his bunch. Another great start to the half for Cedar Creek, but they've got to turn it into something. Whatever he said during the halftime intermission really must have spoke to these guys, because they've really turned on the Jets. Now an interesting flick on there, but it's cleared out by Nestor Martinez. Morales on the ball. His effort from distance was a bit too ambitious. Yeah, the ambition there spurred from uh, that that first touch. That ball came in high, high flying and with some pace, and he managed to bring it down in a matter of a split second. He was ready to go. Perhaps a bit too ready. Yeah, I was going to say. Anthony Jones will take the goal kick. And it's a booming one again. And this one will have to be played all the way back. A new goalkeeper to tell you about into the match. Alexis Villa is the goalie for Cedar Creek. And he'll have to deal with this threat. This is Harvey and Grandes into the box. Grandes with a left-footed shot. And he's rolling in at the far post. Harvey and Grandes, the newest Elgin Wildcat. 
has made it 3 0. That was just a change in momentum that they needed. It seemed like that this half was all Cedar Creek offense. And it's not about quantity of possession, it's about quality. And that was a quality possession right there. Well, he's just tucked that one away beautifully, hasn't he, Dylan? Harvin Grandes, the newest player on this elegant squad, previously hailing from Honduras, making it 3-0. Just an impressive use of the left foot, really massaging that one into the corner. Beautifully done. And so far, the second half, a mirror image of the first. Cedar Creek starting on the front foot, but unable to capitalize. And then Elgin quickly punishing them the other way. And what a lift Harvin Grandes gives to his squad right there. It's all about capitalizing on those mistakes. Memo Hernandez with a powerful clearance. And all of a sudden... Cedar Creek in need of some instant answers. This ball in is going to test Macedo, but he's able to keep it in the box and settle it down without incident. And he'll take his time doing so. The freshman with a bit of gamesmanship. Good punt into the middle. Grandes with a bit of a heavy touch. But Villa wins it back after it's given away. Julio Villa trying to put this match away. Ball played in for Grandes. Grandes back to Villa. Villa leaves it for Hernandez. Hernandez fighting for it. Nice challenge, wins the ball back. Memo Hernandez weaving through, and he is tackled nicely. Play dealt with by the senior captain defensively, Morales for the Eagles. And Morales wins it up ahead into the midfield for Choco Gonzalez who will win a free kick. So Cedar Creek had to come up with an answer there or their night was going to end quickly. They do and they win the ball. Herm, that was a great bailout on the defense there to get that ball out with a quick tackle. It's kind of a sellout, but it's kind of what you had to do there to get that ball out at all costs. Villa, little flick to himself. Julio Villa, challenging the defense, not giving them a second to breathe as Grandes intercepts that one back, took that one down low. <laughs> Villa plays an interesting ball in, had a bit too much on it, but he wins it back. Julio Villa just having his way right now against the Cedar Creek back four, which is now somewhat of a back five. As we approach the 10 minute mark in terms of minutes played in our first, in our second half, it is all Elgin. Now a strike from distance is handled by the keeper Villa. That was Luis Hernandez with a powerful effort. Cedar Creek really needs to find an answer here, and quite frankly, they're running out of time. They looked It seemed like they had something going in the first five to seven minutes of this half. It seems just things have begun to fall apart a little bit. Yeah, in the second half against Elgin, last time these two met, it was Cedar Creek who supplied the magic. They won the second half four goals to one. They'd have to do the exact same thing here today if they want to get into the win column and keep Elgin from getting their first district win. Long ball into the box is headed away convincingly by Jones. Flicked back into the box. Martinez gives chase. Back out to the center for Morales. Morales plays an interesting ball in. Ricardo Lopez looked like he was offside. No matter, he can't get it. It's an Elgin throw. I like what they're doing here on offense, though. Trying to, trying to create these runs and at least keep that idea moving forward down the wings. And maybe trying to push a few guys towards the center and maybe get a cross in, put something on net. Harvin Grandes is still just wincing in the middle of the park. He took that last ball down where it hurts. And he cannot come out of the game because Elgin just does not have a sub. So credit to Harvin for toughing it out right now. You never like to see that, but... This is a mind over matter. This Imagine, is a... <laughs> this is mind over matter in every sense of the word. <laughs> well, that was a bit of a chintzy little foul. He'll set up a free kick for Cedar Creek. Espinosa to take it with his right foot. His service into the box is a dangerous one. Still loose, and a shot is hit over the crossbar. The chance was there for Jesse Martinez. 
and perhaps the best look he's gotten at the goal all night. Boy, you can tell he really wanted that one. Gave it, gave it his all from within three yards of the goal. Yeah, a bit too much power there. With nearly 11 minutes gone by in our second half. Gonzalez is dispossessed. One back nicely by Espinosa. Well, I thought it was one back nicely. Referee disagrees. Foul given. Elgin Ball. Little chippy. Little leg to leg contact. Just too far away from the ball for it to be considered an advantage situation. Coach Michael shouting encouragement from the far sideline with no fans here. You could really hear him from all the way across the field. A beautiful yet quiet night here in Elgin. Kind of has a sense of serenity to it, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that sunset was beautiful, but now the lights have taken their full effect. As Villa follows it in, forces Cedar Creek to kick it out to the side. Peyton Moss kept it alive. Into the middle, where Lopez comes to it. But the ball is won back by Pedro Tellez on a crafty challenge. Tellez played back for Villa, and Villa kicks it all the way back to Macedo. A play so safe it was a little bit risky, but Macedo is the one to clear it out. A little bit better in the last five minutes here from Cedar Creek, but still not enough to pierce the Elgin defense. Looks like they're going to have the same idea here, trying to bring that ball back to the keeper. Villa comes out to get it, beating... Grandes to it. At first glance, that looked a little scary. That keeper came out a bit too far and had some pressure. Situation here for Elgin. Martinez streaking into the box. Can't get it to his right foot. That's going to be a foul. He comes in and fouls Macedo, who was there to cut off the angle, and this does not look good. Macedo is hurt. Card being produced here by the referee. Should be of the yellow variety. And it is. Yeah, you came in pretty hot there. That's not that you never like to see that, especially against one of the younger guys. Dylan, what'd you see on that yellow card challenge? It didn't look like there was any intent uh, to do any harm. He was just trying to get to the ball, and the ball just happened to beat him, and. That collision was unfortunately a little inevitable. Did you see, was that given to Martinez, the yellow card? Uh, seven? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Macedo will get some attention. The clock stopped with just over 13 minutes gone by. Here in our second half. Looks like Elgin is going to hand over the goalie jersey. The backup goalie on my sheet right here is Peyton Moss and it looks like and get a look at him it looks like that's who is gonna head into the crease changes jersey numbers at the moment but that is that is Peyton Moss who will man the goal and what a big moment this is Macedo in the middle of a clean sheet has to exit and we'll see if Moss is able to keep it that way now they're I wouldn't say they're not kicking themselves, but they're glad they've got these three at the very least. Well, Elgin started the day with 11 players. Now they have 13, but with Macedo and Zamarone on the bench with injuries, as Macedo is jogging around on that far touchline, he should be able to get back in soon, one would hope. But Elgin has needed every single body that they've brought to the pitch today. love to see everybody out here doing their part and then some well, there's nowhere to hide no there is not Morales with an interesting through ball this is threatening here Espinosa puts it on the net and it's cleared off the line by Jones everybody chipping in defensively to help out the newly inserted keeper a little pat on the back by the keeper for the defenseman there tell him hey thanks for bailing me out there now a quick throw in, Peyton Moss was caught off his line. And Elgin in desperation has conceded a corner. 
First corner of the night for Cedar Creek, and it comes against the backup keeper. What an interesting twist this is on this game. Looks like as soon as possession's over and they can get a restart a play or a ball over the touchline, they're going to bring Maceda back in here. Ball into the box is dealt with nicely. The clearance by Nestor Martinez, but not all the way out. Peyton Moss comes in and handles a bouncing ball off the right foot of Espinosa. So against the backup goalie, Cedar Creek generates some pressure, but unable to crack the scoreboard. And back into the match comes Macedo, the talented, soon to be probably all district freshman. Heads back in and Peyton Moss gets a fist bump on the way out. How about that for Coach Michael? Going to the backup goalie and getting exactly what he needed. Gave himself just, just enough time to get his man out there. And great overall job by the defense making sure that uh, they know they've got that backup keeper in there. Play, re play restarts with a lazy ball in towards Macedo and that's a good first ball back. For David, who seems to have all that power with him on that punt. In the center, it's controlled by the Eagles. Morales. Double teamed. Memo Hernandez forces them to play it back. And now Villa comes in for the steal. Takes it away. Fires from the right side of the box. And it just misses the near post. Could have ended this thing really early right there. Really turning on the Jets there. Showing a great display of speed. Just bursting through the defense from a good 10 yards behind. Just caught the entire defense sleeping a little bit. And he brought his boots today. Did Julio Villa. Leading the team well. As a captain today in the absence of his co-captain Ryder Michael. Through ball didn't have enough on it. Tellez plays it up to Hernandez. Memo Hernandez nudged off the ball. But he's won a free kick. Memo Hernandez staying in the play. Love the energy level from Elgin here. This entire team is getting battered and they are just still in the fight. Not down, never quit. You mentioned today when you saw the fact that Elgin had nobody on the bench to start the game, and I went through the recent trend of Elgin conceding goal after goal in the second half. It's as if they came in today determined to reverse that trend. This second half has been pretty convincing so far for the Wildcats, but still 23 minutes to go. Against the Cedar Creek team that knows how to score. This is a dangerous ball. Macedo to the top of the box where he is able to deal with it. Lopez challenging Jones. Jones is the highest jumper there. And a foul off the ball. Looks like these guys are playing as if they've got a big chip on their shoulders, and that chip is slowly crumbling away. What does that mean? Coming in with conceding a ton of goals in the second half. They got the second half. They got a clean sheet going. They've got absolutely all the reason to want to keep it this way. I always thought you wanted to keep the chip on your shoulder. I feel... I have a chip on my shoulder. Like I feel just like it's unnecessary stress. Feels like it's something that bogs you down a little bit. Something you want to get rid of. I mean, there's always the uh, the pressure brings the game out of people, but sometimes the game brings the pressure out of people. Counterattacking chance. Hernandez commits the foul. That might draw a card out. Doesn't look like it. Martinez, protesting. Espinosa will set up to take the kick from 30 yards out. Cedar Creek gets almost everybody forward. They know they need to get on the board fast. Second half almost halfway gone. Espinosa's service curling towards the net, but Macedo gets up there and grabs it. Short hands from the freshman. He really has come out to play with another, with an additional fire under his belly after sustaining a bit of an injury earlier on. Coming out here, letting people know, I'm here, I'm healthy, and nothing's getting by me tonight. Nothing so far, with 19 minutes gone in our second half. Knock on wood, if you will. Yeah, 
Turning with it here is Martinez. Gives it away. Villa. Excellent move. Rolled it up onto the front foot. And he's got support. Played in for Grandes. Cleared away at the last moment by Zubets. Morales. Give it away. One back by Luis Hernandez. Rivera's ball. Looking for Grandes. Back out to center. Memo Hernandez. Little friendly fire there. Collided with his own man, Tellez. But it's done well by Jones. Pushed back forward to Memo Hernandez. With space. Memo Hernandez. With support. Pulls it back. On the edge of the box. Gives it away. Went into two defenders there. And now a ball onside on the play is Martinez. But he can't catch up to it. Elgin wins the throw. Hernandez really looking like he wanted to do, all, do it all himself there. And when he had that opening, it didn't take it. It kind of forced his hand. He ran himself right into two defenders there. Still a good sign, though, for Elgin. That offensive pressure has not waned. It is 13 shots for the Wildcats to just seven for the Eagles. And it's been Elgin that's had the higher quality chances by far. Ambitious through ball. Back there to handle it is Luis Rodriguez. Played back to Macedo. His ball is going to be handled by Cedar Creek. Eagles setting up. Ball played into the box. Headed away by Tellez. On the left side, Espinosa. Back for Martinez. Into the box, but headed away by Memo Hernandez. Lopez with a right-footed try. Easy work for Macedo. Who falls on it with just under 20 minutes to go in this match. Or into the fourth quarter, if you will. This defense has not given this Cedar Creek offense much of room to do up to anything. Elgin here could put the game away with another tally. If the three goals they have right now aren't already enough. Hernandez. Through ball in. Rivera pursues. Played back to Villa. Rivera nearly won it. But he's running a bit too fast. Lost control there. Fouled the keeper. Rivera's got to be careful. Already playing with that yellow card. But right there, the officials give him some leeway. Given away cheaply by Hernandez. Here's a chance for Cedar Creek. Martinez is onside. Macedo coming up to meet him at the edge of the box. And Macedo comes way out to deal with it. Nicely, nicely done by the freshman. Definition of a sweeper keeper right there. If you're just joining us, Wildcats got two goals in the first half from Julio Villa. Seven minutes into this second half, Harbin Grandes added a marker of his own. And it is 3-0 to the hometown Wildcats, currently sitting with a winless record in district play, 0-10, but have a great chance today to pick up three points. Rivera sees that one roll over the touchline, throw into Cedar Creek, an Eagles team that can score with the best of them. They're fourth place in the district, but have the third most goals on the season. But today, they have not been able to get much going yet. Lopez trying to change that. He's badgered by two Wildcats who eventually concede the throw. Cedar Creek, a sturdy chaff on the front foot, hasn't been able to make much of it. And Elgin has been effective. A counterattack that's had some bite. That ball in, doesn't get there. Nestor Martinez blocks it. Elgin concedes the court. Corner's now 2 2 after Cedar Creek takes this one. Well, to get four, you gotta get one. This is a great chance to get one. Played to the far side of the box. 
Headed effort back into the middle. Interesting flick on there by Morales. That'll help the Eagles win their third corner of the night. But the clock winding. Coach Michael organizing his team. The 11 that have been out there this half had been the same 11 pretty much the entire way with Zamarone injured and five other players unavailable. This corner is at the edge of the box and it trickles back to Martinez. Another service in, headed effort by Lopez. Another flick on and it goes over the crossbar. Espinosa shaking his head. Poor result, but great effort all around. That ball really got to the middle quickly and kind of caught the Elgin defense off guard a little bit. Yeah, a couple of really good headed passes there, but Macedo never getting out of position. Always making it tough on those Cedar Creek shooters. Situational awareness. Now Macedo has a bit of trouble with that ball. Gives it away. Martinez at the edge of the box. Has it taken away from him? by Anthony Jones. What a saving defensive play. Peyton Moss plays it back to Luis Hernandez who clears it out and Julio Villa is off to the races and Villa draws a foul advantage played. This is Grandes at the edge of the box. Advantage still played and no foul is going to be given. Cedar Creek with a necessary stop. Looked like Elgin could have gotten a fourth there. Now a ball played in over the top. Martinez is ruled onside. Jesse Martinez is ruled offside. Delayed call there, but the right one. Back in fourth sequence there, and a yellow card is given now to the Cedar Creek captain. That was the foul that the official played the advantage for on the run in by Julio Villa, who's got the brace tonight. After the official, or the referee, let the play come to its natural conclusion. He has decided to give the yellow card to Kevin Morales. That's the second Cedar Creek player to get cautioned. You kind of feel at this point that maybe they're getting a little bit chippy. Maybe they're getting a little bit aggressive because they're down. And with 14 minutes, 15 minutes remaining in this game, got to get a little extra aggressive if you want to try to put one on, on goal and not get shut out here. Here's a through ball looking for Lopez. Jones once again there defensively. Lopez played it looking for Martinez who's frustrated with that service wasn't quite good enough that one stays in play kept alive by Sesmas in the center of the park nicely set up ball and onto the flank service in the box Lopez with a one touch and a beautiful shot but a better save by Macedo it was a chest to volley situation there for Lopez would have been a sparkling goal but he couldn't execute the tough finish that was a great setup as well in the midfield a little bit of an ankle breaker you can see now why Cedar Creek is such a potent offense the question is will they get to the party in time tonight right now it's the Elgin defense having all the fun Lopez back on the ball ahead for Martinez can't get through Jones Grandes. And now the question for Elgin becomes, how do you keep up this activity? That's one way to do it. Villa with a challenge in the center. Play back. Morales. Espinosa turning with the ball. Grandes forces Cedar Creek to play it further back. All the way back to the keeper, Villa. Who can't connect with his midfielder in the center. Lopez turning. Through ball couldn't get past Jones. Who's been an absolute rock in the center. Hernandez turning. Only gets it as far as Zubets. Elgin just trying to avoid mistakes now. As Memo Hernandez is content to pull the ball out. Anthony Jones is fouled. If you're Cedar Creek, Dylan, how do you get forward without necessarily getting desperate? Uh, I think it kind of has to get to that point within the next few minutes where desperate times call for desperate measures. I think you have to find a way to stay within yourself 
while at the same time maybe breaking out a little bit on the aggression side. Uh, we've seen the offenses there, or at least the potential for the offenses there. Now it's about finding that one little hole and just executing. See what they come up with here off of this indirect. It's a long ball in. Martinez giving chase. He'll handle it near the corner. Jesse Martinez is fouled. Looks like that one is on Tellez, and he knows it. A naughty challenge there. Check that, Nestor Martinez. Well, if you're going to foul somebody close to the goal, that's the place to do it, just outside the box with an almost 90-degree angle, or rather 180-degree angle into the goal. Really going to have to either put a challenging touch on this ball or just thread it through to the middle and try to set something else up. Here's the ball in. The service is all to the far post. Macedo couldn't handle it. Follow-up effort is skied. Another chance by the boards, and you just wonder how many of those will be left for Cedar Creek. I think at this point, time in, time out. After missing some of those, sh after missing a couple of those shots, I think it's time for these Elgin boys to just kind of park the bus a little bit. One more would be a nail in the coffin, but at this point. Having not conceded one yet, it doesn't hurt them to just try to be content with their three and get themselves three points on the table. Here's a nice service in from Villa. And he forces his counterpart, Alexis Villa, to make the play. Wildcats have not kept a clean sheet since January. On January 22nd, they kept Wimberley off the board. They have yet to keep a clean sheet in district play. They're 10 minutes away from trying to do that tonight. Martinez on the ball. Is dispossessed. Luis Rodriguez with a convincing clearance up the flank. Espinosa with some service into the box. Headed away by Luis Hernandez. Martinez from distance. He is caught by Macedo. Under 10 minutes to go in this one. From Wildcat Stadium on Vibe Live, I'm Jay Kerman. He's Dylan Zisman. Elgin with a pair of first half goals from Julio Villa, a third goal from Harvin Grandes, and they've kept Cedar Creek off the board. Nine saves tonight for David Macedo. These ingredients have led to the current scoreline and perhaps the best chance of the year for Elgin to pick up their first district win. Zubets. Service into the box and some space here. Lopez, flick on. Martinez keeps it in play. Has support, but it's gone over the end line. Goal kick. Valuable time will tick down. Just as you think, they're not going to get many more chances like that. Here they are, 30 seconds later, grabbing themselves another one. Wildcats have lost 11 straight coming into this one. How much does that play into your mindset now as you try and close it out down the stretch? Assuming the score maintains itself, or rather the outcome maintains itself, this is going to be accepted with open arms on all accounts. Yeah, it would also be accepted with open arms by both Bastrop and Connolly, the two teams chasing Cedar Creek for that fourth and final playoff spot in the district. What a shakeup this would be. A welcome surprise when they wake up in the morning. Well, for an Elgin team that's been working hard all season and improving, it shouldn't be that surprising. Here's Macedo once again dealing with the threat. Espinosa is denied. Under eight minutes to go. Cedar Creek getting the better of the play here as of late, but they've been kept off the score sheet. And a powerful boot clearance by Hernandez. And that one makes its way maybe 15, 20 rows up near us. I just want to catch a, a, a soccer ball in the press box one time. Is that too much to ask? Uh, I think you'd have better luck at a baseball game getting the ball in the box. Yeah, fair enough. Jones looking for Peyton Moss who Peyton Moss has had an eventful game number 16 in purple he had the opening assist 
for Elgin. He assisted the first via tally, as this is a foul. Ball back to the Wildcats. Peyton Moss assisted on the first goal, then had to fill in between the pipes when Macedo briefly exited with an injury. And he made a save during that time, fended off a corner successfully, and now he's back on the pitch as a midfielder. Well, How about that? A, it's an testament to his versatility at the very least. Shows he can work his way around the pitch and really put the team on his back in whatever role he needs to fill. Grandes. Moss. Peyton Moss. Arvin Grandes with space. Hernandez. Luis Hernandez. Big body in the middle. Has won a lot of his challenges in this game. Luis Hernandez. Really every Elgin player has had to step up. They've all been in there the whole game. Especially after Zamarone left with an injury late in the first half. Clock should read about 34 minutes gone by. There are about six minutes to go in this game. Macedo taking his sweet time again, forcing the Eagles to trot into the box before he falls on it. Clock winding now. The one you see on your Vipe live stream is now accurate. 34 and a half minutes gone in this second half. And what a night it's been for Elgin. And Macedo's been doing this all game, and I definitely like the strategy he's employed to make the attackers come to him and run at him with a little bit of speed before he picks up that ball. Not only does it make the players lose their energy a little bit, but it also runs out the clock a little bit in a game where he's trying to keep that sheet clean. He does so again. Rolled out to Jones. Controlled in the center. Good ball. Martinez trying to get around Macedo. And a penalty is going to be given right here. Penalty, the foul is on Macedo, clock will stop, and that's the last thing Elgin wanted to do. And as, we, as we mentioned, trying to run out the clock and keep that sheet clean, here's a chance for both of those things to go awry. So David Macedo has been taking aggressive lines all night. He's been coming out and challenging the Cedar Creek players, but now a penalty kick coming. It'll be 18 to take it for Cedar Creek. The captain. Safe to say they need this one to go in. Definitely. Macedo dancing Got around it. on his line, ready. Got to start somewhere. Here's the penalty. And it's tucked away neatly. Eagles will go grab the ball. Macedo trying to hold it up away from him. And the clock winding once again, under five minutes to go in this match. The Eagles have finally touched the score sheet. It was a penalty on a foul conceded by Macedo near the edge of the box. And we'll see if that can jumpstart them. Elgin has to keep their nerve here. Clean sheet gone, but a two-goal lead nonetheless. Well, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And <laughs> his stalling tactics only lasted him all of 76 minutes, but those last four <laughs> came around to bite him. Hey, well, I mean, we'll see. Time is going to be tight here for Cedar Creek either way. And a quick clearance up the pitch. Looks like Julio Villa has dropped back into more of a defensive role here for Elgin. The senior captain looking to keep this lead right where it is. He helped build it. This is Grandes up the left wing. Laid it off for Rivera. It's given away. Eagles win a throw. Oh, no. This is an Elgin throw. The official on the far touchline views it differently. Throw into Elgin. And some frustration setting in for the Eagles. 
who are, who would slip out of the fourth playoff spot in all likelihood with a loss tonight. They'd have a chance, obviously, to get back into that spot. On the edge of the box, Fia played in for Grandes. Grandes on the ball until he's dispossessed. And this one's cleared all the way into the corner. Peyton Moss will not get there in time, but the clock winds. Three and a half minutes to play. 3-1 the lead for the Elgin Wildcats. These 13 manned Wildcats, an undermanned squad, a young squad. Tonight hoping to go down as a sign of their improvement. Martinez gets played the ball. Offside will stop the play. The shot went into the side of the netting anyhow. And now Elgin can start to see it through. Just three minutes to go and there will be only about two and a half left before they kick this one. And offsides has been the death of them all game. That's the third offsides call now on balls that with another three seconds of timing have great potential for goal scoring opportunities. Got to imagine they're going to be working on formation in practice tomorrow. Well, the Cedar Creek Eagles. That would be correct. Have, uh, yeah. Their attack tonight has, uh, has generated some really strong chances in the second half. It was the first half where it really abandoned them. But we'll see if they can mount a last gasp comeback. Not if Anthony Jones has anything to say about it. Powerful clearance takes us to about the two-minute mark. throw-in Choco Gonzalez gets past Memo Hernandez ball played back to Morales who just has to huff it forward here dangerous ball Lopez in the box Martinez a left-footed shot it's too high and that might have been the moment for Cedar Creek to get back into this one but now as the game heads into its dying moments Elgin hoping to kill this losing streak they were gonna need that one big time and the fact that it went through the uprights and not below the crossbar is a breath of fresh air. In the center, Tellez follows it. Nestor Martinez there. Jorge Martinez now for Cedar Creek. Played back neatly to Choco Gonzalez. One touch passing here. It's pretty from the Eagles, but it's a slow buildup. Gonzalez tried to take a long distance effort that didn't do anything. Grandes dispossessed by Gonzalez. Good ball in, but Macedo is ready for it. Such good instincts from the freshman as the game heads into its final minute. And for everything that this Elgin team has battled in this game and this week, you, you, get, you get thrashed a bit by the top two teams in the district, Weiss and Hendrickson. And then to come back home to Wildcat Stadium today and have this kind of performance just has to be uplifting. Definitely going to jolt some life into the Elgin team, at least moving forward. While they may miss out on the playoffs, they're definitely not going to forget they took down a team that took them out of contention. Offside. And a late shot attempt hit Macedo in the noggin. The old Scott Sterling play. Well, Macedo won't get the clean sheet tonight. But he'll have a night to be proud of. Ten saves for the freshman. To have the only goal conceded be a penalty is very telling of just how good he's been tonight. Yeah, and he's going to be good enough for the Elgin Wildcats with two seconds to go. Now one. That's it. Full time here at Wildcat Stadium. The final score, your Elgin Wildcats three and the Cedar Creek Eagles one. What a night, Dylan, for Elgin Soccer. A team that was in desperate need of a win, and tonight they've snapped their district losing streak. That really is a breath of fresh air. It really brings, definitely going <laughs> to bring the boys home with a little bit of happiness as a, for a change. Well, this Elgin team that lost so many seniors when the year started has had so many young guys just improving, getting better every single game. And it has to feel good for Coach Ronnie Michael to come out today with a team of just 13 players and put on a complete performance like this. Really no letdowns from the Wildcats. Everybody played their part. Everybody stepped up and then some. And that was just a great all-around team effort. No man left behind tonight. 
Player of the game, I can pick a few candidates, but first we'll start with Julio Villa, the man whose first half brace proved to be enough for Elgin today. Uh, absolutely, he came out of the gates hot, two goals quickly, and just an all-around offensive force, really set up some nice plays down the stretch. Uh, I would also give some credit to Peyton Moss, who, on all sides of the ball, uh, had, an, had an assist on offense and a couple good de defensive stops in the net. Yeah, Moss chipped in in a lot of different ways. I'd also give a 10 out of 10 in this game to Anthony Jones, the center back today for the Wildcats, really in that sweeper role, doing everything he could to defuse the Cedar Creek attack. The defense definitely held that line down and provided some of that security to the keeper that allowed him to keep that sheet nearly clean, barring the last five minutes, really playing their part. And then how about the men in the middle? Luis and Memo Hernandez really did a good job controlling the ball tonight. They really did, and they had, a, they had a good scheme going. Not only were they using the sides of the field, they were also running right down the middle, kind of gut-punching these guys a little bit. And they had goals coming from the left, right, and up the middle. And finally, Dylan, the newest contributor to the Wildcats squad, Harbin Grandes, coming up with a second-half goal that really gave Elgin some breathing room. I thought pretty quickly that after not scoring anything in the first half, that that, for, that one goal in the second half was really more of a nail in the coffin. I thought that 3-0 was enough to put this game away, but I held my tongue out to the very last minute. I think that last goal really solidified the win for Elgin. And thank goodness you did, because you held your tongue, and Elgin held the lead. 3-1 to one, the final here tonight. What a win for Coach Ronnie Michael and his squad. For all of us here at Vipe Live from Wildcat Stadium, for Dylan Zisman, I am Jake Herman saying so long, and we'll see you on Friday for the next broadcast of Elgin Boys Soccer. They'll host Pflugerville Connolly. We'll see you then.